Hey, good day, it's Preso. This is a short video follow-up on the operation of this rear parting tool post that I made for my Colchester student lathe. Now I did a three-part video series on the manufacturing of these parts and also the last video dealt with testing this on some different materials. Now I should say that I'm totally happy with this build. It's like 500% better than what I was doing previously when I had a front-mounted parting tool blade even the inverted style of parting tool blade that I was using in the front tool post gave me problems but this so far has proved to be way way better than what I was doing. I can now power feed this through stock and uh, I haven't yet had a, a, an issue with it catching or digging in or breaking a blade. Now you may also notice that I've replaced the crappy commercially made zinc plated hex headed bolt that I was using previously to hold this riser down to the base. So I just made this unit yesterday, it's stainless steel. Why did I use stainless steel? Well, because I had some, and also it was the right size and it won't corrode. Now it's a, I don't know what the grade is, it's just a piece of scrap that I had, but it, as you know, uh, some stainless is very tough, and uh, this, this was actually quite a tough material to turn. And while I was making this part, I had to part off this washer and also the, the head of the bolt, basically, or the excess from the head of the bolt. Now this is the material that I had in the chuck at the time, and you see I parted that off, and the surface finish on that cut was exceptionally good. Now these are the chips that came out, and I must say that uh, parting off stainless steel in my lathe was something that always horrified me. I hated doing it, but this just cut beautifully. No issues at all. So. Yeah, now it looks a lot better and uh, I'm very happy with that. It's, it's going to sit there and, and look pretty <laughs> and it won't corrode. Now, uh, what's this video about? Well, there were some people who had offered suggestions about why I was getting this weird pattern in stock that had cut off. And I did ask for help with that and some people have suggested that maybe the blade was um, not stiff enough and that there was some sort of torsional thing going on there. Some people also suggested that it was just a harmonic thing, which I tend to agree with. Some people said that maybe the blade wasn't dead square to the axis of the lathe. And uh, some people questioned whether the cross slide was actually lifting vertically during the cut. So I thought I should address some of those things in this video. Okay, first thing, I actually ran an indicator along the side of the blade here and found that it wasn't square to the axis of the lathe. Now, strangely enough, the cast iron block on the base here is square, so is the steel riser. The tool holder itself is slightly out of square. The blade is even more out of square than the tool holder. Now, I can't account for that. I've taken everything apart, cleaned everything, I've deburred everything again. I've run a stone over the slot where the blade sits, and I've run the indicator back over, and it was marginally better, but still out. So I um, don't know what's gone wrong, but what I have done is I've loosened off these uh, two M5 screws here and I've tapped the parting tool holder until the blade is now square to the axis of the lathe. Now that's a bit disappointing. I was hoping that once that was pushed in there and tightened down, it was never going to move and it was going to stay square. So there's an opportunity to do some fine tuning there. Maybe it just needs some remedial machining to get that right. But uh, now that it's square, I want to test it again. So we're going to do that in a minute. Now, another thing that people asked about was uh, whether the whole tool holder was lifting vertically. So as the load goes on the tip of the tool, it pushes the tip of the tool vertically upwards. And uh, there was some suggestion that maybe it was lifting above center line. So I want to test that as well. So I put an indicator on the saddle of the lathe and I've got the probe sitting on the top of the cast iron base. So if there is any lifting going on during the cut, we'll see that on the, the scale of the, uh, the indicator. So I'm going to do that now and uh, let's have a look to see whether we're getting any deflection. Now, I should say I've already tried it, <laughs> um, so, but I'll show you on camera. Let's see what happens. So here's sort of an overhead view. Uh, you can see I've got the indicator zeroed out there. It is actually engaged on the cast iron base there, so we're going to see any deflection on the indicator if it does start to lift. But before I do that test, I thought I'd show you this. This was actually in the chip tray underneath the, the bed of the lathe 
and this is from the stainless steel that I parted off yesterday and uh, I've never seen that happen before it's just curled itself up beautifully it's like one of those sort of clock springs so yeah, yeah interesting all right, let's uh, let's try this. So I'm running this at 500 RPM. I'll hand feed it, and that way we can stop and start, and we'll see if there is any deflection in the needle there. And I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, cutting oil on this. Normally, I would just use the flood coolant, but we'll just sort of hand apply that. Okay, let's see what happens. So I was seeing about 0 0.005 uh, on that dial. Why don't I give you a close up look. I'm just going to zero that out for the camera. Okay, let's try again. So there's almost no movement relative to the saddle. Now, can the saddle lift off the bed? Uh, not so sure. Let me see if I can set the indicator up and try that. So you can see here now that I've mounted the indicator base on the inside of the bed and I've got the probe bearing on the base of the cast iron block there. So again, we'll just hand feed this, see if we can get any movement on the dial. Well, I'm not seeing much movement there at all, so maybe about uh, 0.005 of a millimetre, so that's gratifying. I must have the Gibbs set up on this lathe correctly after all. So I guess the next thing we need to do is sort of do a full part off under power feed, and I'll put a piece of aluminium in there and we'll try it again, now that I've sort of tuned everything up a bit, and we'll see whether we're still getting that weird pattern in the stock. Just went up to have a break and I thought, in order to be thorough, I should really do a test where we put the indicator on the saddle of the lathe and the tip of the indicator on the top of the parting blade. And that way we can measure the total deflection between the saddle and the tip of the blade. So I've got the indicator zeroed out there and uh, we'll start the lathe. I'm going to run this at 315 RPM and I'm starting a new cut alongside the other one that I was de doing in the previous test. So let's see how this goes. That was about 0.05 of a millimetre. The indicator didn't actually go back to zero, so there's probably a bit of flex in that mechanism as well. But yeah, there is definitely more lift if we're measuring at the tip of the blade. But in a way, that's sort of the self-regulating thing happening. So if you do overload the tip of the blade, it should lift up and flex away from the interface between the tip of the blade and the material. And it's that, you know, that gives you that reassurance that you're gonna not going to pull the blade into the cut and snap it off. So I'm going to put a piece of aluminium in here now and we'll cut off an entire slice and just see if we still get that funny pattern in it. This is the same stock that I did the test on in the third video in the build and this was the pattern that we got on the surface of that. So there is a sort of a concentric ring pattern there but there's also a very faint radial pattern as well. So now that I've tuned up a few things here, we'll just try it. So it's the same speed, 500 RPM, same feed rate, but this time I'll run some uh, coolant on this, uh, just so I don't have to squirt it with WD-40 during the filming. So here we go.
Uh, there is a very slight wavy pattern in that, but it's better. Where's the other piece? So there's the other piece alongside it there. This one has more of the concentric rings. This one here has got a much smoother face on it, but I can see that there is a very slight wavy pattern to that. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not bothered. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is something that I think you're gonna get with most types of parting tools. Uh, of course, if you've got a super heavy, super rigid lathe, then you're laughing. But for me as a hobbyist, if I can get that sort of result there, I'm really happy. Now, I have actually ordered a, an insert type tool holder with a three millimeter wide blade. This one's only two and uh, it's 26 millimeters deep. So I should be able to get a much deeper cut with that style of insert cutter. When that turns up, I'll make another tool holder. Uh, it will need another one. And then you know, maybe we'll revisit this and have a look at it again. Anyway, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. If you still have questions, still have suggestions, put them in the comments. Uh, the more information I have on this process, the better. Okay, it's Preso signing out. I'll see you next time. Oh, and by the way, this video is coming out before I do the, the little Mighty Bite clamp build. That's going to be like a week further on. Okay, catch you on that one. See ya.